So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. When the man Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Our third passage now is Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 12. Proverbs chapter 31, starting in verse 10. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings with him good, not harm, all the days of her life. And our fourth passage is in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. And this is entitled Mary's Song. Luke 1, starting at verse 46. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the number of state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as said to our fathers. And our final passage is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And this is entitled Love. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be set filled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. That's our scripture reading. And is there children's church this morning? Okay, not this morning, so children, please stay seated. Thank you, Barry. Hi. Good to see you all this morning. Beautiful day, huh? Beautiful day. We want to uh, talk about mothers today. And sermons on special days are more difficult for me. I don't know why. 
Some things are difficult for some people and some things are not. <clears throat> you know, when God made man and woman, he had a plan in mind. He had a purpose. Now, they're not the same. So he had a purpose for one and he had a purpose for the other one. And after thousands of years, that plan and purpose still stands. Amen? Isn't that amazing? You know why? Because even in the garden, the devil came after man and woman, but he picked on the woman, you remember that? And nailed her. And he's been nailing women ever since. A very interesting thing to me was that Thousands of years before Jesus, women were worshipped as a goddess. They were the mother of Pharaoh, so of course they had to be God, or a God. But they were commonly dealt with as far as the custom and as far as the culture was concerned. Same thing is true in Rome, 500 years before Christ and through the time of Christ. Now, men have been pecked on too, but we're not talking about men today. We're talking about women. And interestingly enough, they were not thought of as equal with man. In fact, they still aren't in many, many places. The one who really liberated women was Jesus. When you study in detail the history of the world, you'll find out that Jesus is the one that reveals the fact, true since creation, both of them are honored creation of God. Now man had one thing to do, and women had another thing to do. But the devil kept pecking at him. And so today, may I suggest to you that if you do not know the scriptures, you don't have a clue what a woman is supposed to do. Not a clue. Our present culture has got that so cluttered and confused and contaminated I really feel sorry for a 12, 14, 16, 18 year old girl today that doesn't know about Jesus and the word of God. She doesn't have a clue why she's here. What her purpose is. Just do what you want to do. Really? Really? That's her purpose? I don't think so. And when she experiences this world and the way it treats women, she's soon a person of despair. Because without purpose...
You're nobody. I am so glad that my Father in heaven (laughs) tells about what we are, especially women. There's no doubt in my mind that when God first made a woman, she was as beautiful as they are now. Women are a creature of great beauty. They're a creature of great intelligence. They're a creature of great purpose. And they have the ability to be very passionate in what they're doing. And when they grow up in a home where they are taught the word of God, they know these things. And when they go out, as we all need to do and live in this world, they just ride over this world like a bunch of stubble. They are so sure of themselves. They know where they're going. They know what they're doing. Just get out of the way if you don't want to get tromped on. I have a granddaughter. Her name is Teresa Carlson. She's gone to one year of college at Lewis and Clark down there in Pullman, I mean uh, Lewiston. And she had the opportunity to run for president of the student body. Now one of the things that made that something that was interesting to her was that attached to it was a payment for all of her college Next year's books and tuition and the whole works. So she decided to run for it. Now she's a girl who was raised in a Christian family. Christian ethics. Christian knowledge. I worked with her in a children's camp three, four years ago. What? Five or six? I witnessed her bringing a little girl to the Lord Jesus. So she not only knows who she is, she knows what she can do in the Lord. When she decided to run for president of the student body, she was running against a person that was really a politic. She put her name everywhere. She put it on the stair steps as you went up the stairs. She had big banners. She had things on windows. Teresa didn't do any of that. Who do you think won? Teresa did. She had the value of being somebody in the Lord. And that made her a person of influence. And may I suggest to you that that's the way it works. Now, somebody that's pretty involved in that is a a gadget we call mother. (laughs) When the Lord first made him, he said, now I want you to go out and multiply. I want you to go out and have children. And I suggest to you that's one of the purposes of a woman. And miraculously, she can do it. 
Man helps her. But when it comes to taking care of that baby the first nine months, she does it all by herself. After that, she can get some help. And I believe that a mother's love is established in the first nine months because she carries that baby in her body. We can appreciate that as men, but we don't have a clue what that would be like. Not a clue. You know, in psychology, we learn that Popinquity is something that you say to somebody when you spend a lot of time with them and you fall in love. Well, by the time that child is birthed, a mother takes that baby and holds it to her breast and she celebrates her love. And every mother here can hearken back in her memory and celebrate that moment all over again. Amen? I don't want to very loud. Amen? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you may not think this is true, but it is true. I have been there witnessing the birth of some of my grandchildren. I've witnessed that joy. That begins at that moment. No, no, begin long before that. But then is completed at that moment. And then in the process of living with that child and teaching that child, it's just enhanced, just made bigger, made better. Now that mother's love comes straight from God. God is love. And the love that she has towards that child is the love that you read about in 1 Corinthians 13. And every teenage girl should know that. Have an opportunity to come become acquainted with that. So she can realize what value can be in her life. Extremely necessary. Not only does she have the opportunity of falling deeply in love with that precious one. But she has the opportunity of forming that one by in <laughs> making possible an environment that will form that child. What kind of a home are you bringing it up in? Boy, does the devil hammer on that one. He loves to get men and women, mom and dad to divorce. He loves to get mom and dad to fight, supplying a horrible environment. He loves to bring every kind of disease, every kind of ailment, every kind of accident, just hammers at those mothers, children. But once again, the mother who has come to know God Come to experience the love of God in herself and express it in her children. Walks a straight line right through that trouble. Stands beside him. Knows her purpose with them. And may I suggest knows her value. Far above rubies. You think money has value? That's a bunch of junk compared to that. Money can come and go like that sunshine. Have you noticed that lately? The value 
that a mother supplies to that child is just beyond belief. Beyond calculation. Because it forms within that child what she then can form within her child. This is something that carries over. Generation after generation after generation. And it's amazing to me. To me. The devil has messed up a lot of things in this world, but you know what? He has not messed up the way women have children and the way children are born. Those little rascals come out of that womb just as perfect <laughs> as they did when the first one was born. I don't know when that was, but I know the first one was, don't you? The devil has not been able to mess up human birth. Oh, he tries. But it doesn't happen to a mother that has been raised in a Christian family, so she's come to know why she's here. And she follows the truth of the word of God in the way she lives, and the way she marries, and the way she treats her children. Now, one of the things that makes this a little confusing and difficult is the fact that these children aren't exactly like her. They can be very different. <laughs> oh, so different. And so mother's love gets tested a little once in a while. But blessed is that mother that remains what, that remembers what we read in 1 Corinthians 13 where it says, is faithful, keeps no record of wrongs, is patient, is kind, thinks good of that child all the time. A mother's love to me is one of the mysteries of God's grace. And it comes from a knowledge of his eternal word that is as true now as it was when it was first written. And you know what? It works. It works. Praise his holy name. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that my mother knew what she was doing. Knew her purpose and fulfilled it. She walked before you and you said you've walked a good race. Ruth, come into the kingdom that I've prepared for you. You've raised three children to the glory of God, and I appreciate that. And that's what I sent you down there to do. <laughs> I ask that you would especially touch each mother here today. with an additional revelation of your grace that will reveal to them their continuing purpose and plan for their life. And I ask that you would give them strength in difficulty. I would ask that you would give them healing in disease or accident. I would ask that you would give them patience and hope. And Father, I ask that the work that you produce through their hands 
might mean just as sound as the word of God itself. Because it is a fruit of it. And for this we praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.